Let's sew the cutest and easiest Jack Skellington pillow that you will ever sew together. All right, so here is what you need. You'll need a printout of a Jack Skellington design, some heat and bond, I like the ultra hold, some black fabric for the eyes and nose, and then you'll need some black thread for the mouth because I just used my sewing machine to stitch that in place. And then you'll need some scrap piece of batting that is big enough for your pillow, the round area that you want. Now I'm using a friction pin that is heat erasable to trace out a circle. So I'm just using a mixing bowl that I have that is about the size that I want my pillow to be. So I just kind of looked at the printout that I made um, that, that I used for the Jack Skellington face and made sure it would fit in the circle area. Now, before I cut out the two layers of fabric I have here for the front and back and pillow, I'm gonna put my batting down so I can just go ahead and cut it all out at once because I'm actually gonna use one of my rulers to cut this out. So I'm placing a few pins just so everything doesn't shift when I am cutting just keep everything in place for me a little better. So I'm using this quarter inch ruler because I'm going to actually cut a quarter of an inch outside of this drawn line so that I can get the exact size that I was hoping for on this pillow. And I'm just gonna slowly use my rotary cutter to go around the circle. It's a little bit easier for me to do this than scissors, but you can just go ahead and use scissors if you would like to. And if you don't mind that your pillow is a little bit smaller, just cut on the line. So there are all three of my pieces. So the front of the pillow, the back of the pillow, which are white fabric and the batting. So now I'm gonna cut out the heat and bond that I'm going to fuse to the back of this black paper I'm using, or the black fabric that I am using for the eyes and nose and everything. So now that I cut it out to the same size as my fabric, I'm going to fuse it in place. So I'm fusing the bumpy side of the heat and bond to the back of my fabric. It really doesn't take long to fuse the heat and bond, so just follow the instructions on the package. So now I'm going to cut out the eyes and the nose on the coloring page that I printed out with the Jack Skellington face on it. It was really the perfect size for this project. Now, keep in mind that if you're using a printout like I did, so this was just a coloring page that I found on the internet, that it likely has a copyright attached to it. So you won't be able to sell these. Just, you know, I'm making these for my own personal use, um, one for my kids, each of my kids. So keep that in mind. All right, so now that I have all the pieces cut out, I'm just going to trace them onto the paper side of the heat and bond that I had already fused onto the back side of the fabric. So I'm just gonna carefully trace around them. I have found that sometimes I'll use a ruler to hold it in place or I have some, some pattern weights that I can put on here to trace them but I can usually do this quick enough with these small pieces that it's not too big of a deal, but those are some ideas. Now that I have them traced out, I'm just going to cut out the trace lines. So it really is very easy to put these pillows together and they turn out so, so cute. So just carefully trace them out because I'm not turning the edges or anything, this ultra, hold heat and bond actually doesn't require any sewing, which makes this project even that much easier. All right, so now you're just going to remove the paper off of the back of the heat and bond. And after I remove the paper from all the pieces, I'm just going to lay them out and get them in a position that I like. Now this paper can be hard to remove. It's very, very tricky. It's probably the hardest part of this entire project, honestly. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you struggle with re removing the paper off the back of these heat and bond products. We can all commiserate together on this part. <laughs> all right, so once I get them removed, like I said, I'm just going to lay them out um, how I like 
I can move them around a little bit, make sure I like how they look. And then you pretty much just use your iron again to put the, to fuse them in place. And I just follow the, the instructions, like I said, on the heat and bond to make sure I fuse it for the proper amount of time. Get the mouth in place. I decided to just cut through the, the printout that I used to use that to trace to make sure I liked the way it looked. I didn't want to freehand it. <laughs> so I'm just cutting all the little lines out to make this work. And once I get them all cut out, I'm just going to use my friction pen, the heat erase pen, to draw the mouth in place on the fabric. So I'm just gonna mark through all those cut lines to get the mouth in place and then it will work out really well because it's the perfect length and i really liked the direction of kind of the the dashed teeth like the fangs i don't know what they are but i really liked the way they had those curved so tracing them ensured that i got that look that i was wanting to kind of emulate on the pillow so it took a little more time i think doing this but it really, I think, is going to be worth it in the end to get the look that I liked when I saw this, um, this coloring page. Now you'll want to baste your batting onto the wrong side of your fabric that has the Jack Skellington face on it. This is going to give us a good base for sewing our mouth in place. So I'm just using some black thread and following all of these lines and i'm just carefully maneuvering back and forth i have my stitch length at 2.5 because i really wanted to have nice dense stitches and i'm leaving my needle down when i do all of my turns and i just want to let you know i actually went over all of these lines probably four times to get it as heavy with stitches as I wanted it to be to get the look I was going for. So if you want it, if you like hand stitching or anything like that, you might like doing an embroidery stitch here instead of using the sewing machine. That might be a good option because then you can use some thicker threads, but uh, this is the method that I ended up going with. So here is how it looks. I just need to use my iron to heat erase the friction pen, but I really love how it turned out. So now I'm taking that last piece of fabric and placing it wrong sides together, covering up the Jack Skellington face and just putting some clips in place for sewing. So you may notice that down at the bottom here, I left some clips really close together. That is to let me know I do not want to stitch between those double clips because I need to leave that open so I can turn the pillow later. So after sewing that quarter inch seam all the way around the pillow, leaving that open area, I can flip the pillow right side out and kind of see how it is turning out. And I can already see it is adorable. So I'm just going to press the seams with my finger to get it nice and round and then we can start stuffing the pillow. So I'm just using this fluff, this polyfill fluff, and I'm gonna stuff this pillow as full as I can comfortably stuff it just so it's nice and cozy pillow. So after I stuff the pillow nice and full, I'm just going to fold the open area about a quarter of an inch in and use some clips to to hold it closed and then i'm just going to hand stitch it closed just to make it nice and easy and after stitching it closed the jack skellington pillow is finished it is actually a very quick make and i had a lot of fun sewing this cute pillow together i hope you enjoy it too bye